Training for a 100 miler, week one. You know, this is my way of staying accountable and sharing the process as I try to cram 14 weeks of training in before the Vermont 100 miler on July 21st. And I thought it'd be fun to share the experience, see what happens, get some advice along the way. You know, the 100 mile distance is something I've had my eye on since 2012, but I've been very patient because I just know how much work it takes to get the body ready for something as big as this. I have a ton of respect for the distance and I want to do it right. Why the Vermont 100 miler? Well, really out of convenience, it's right over in Vermont next door and it's midsummer, which isn't the best for heat, but it aligns well with my schedule. It's also probably not the best 100 mile race that I'd be suited for just because it's very runnable, it's fast. It's a lot of dirt roads. It's not as technical or with um, as much vertical, but it's still 100 miles. There's still a ton of vert for um, one race. And most importantly, it's a qualifier that has qualifying points for UTMB Ultra Trail Mont Blanc. And I'll link to that video as well. And really, that's the key word of the week here is motivation. And what's motivating me for this race in the big picture is hopefully being able to run UTMB. And so I need points to do that. And this race will get me, I think, six points towards 15 points, which you can combine three races. So I've got some Vermont 50 points. Hopefully I'll have the Vermont 100 points and then I'll just have to get five more points in the form of probably 100K. And then I can enter the lottery for UTMB, which would either be for next summer 2019 or for 2020. I haven't really been that motivated to run. I didn't run much this winter. I just basically skied and let my body heal. And once I registered for the Vermont 100, it started to get real and I realized, okay, I need to get on a training plan. And I read Hal Kerner's book, what is it? Field Guide to Ultra Running. I've got my cheat sheet here, which was great. You know, it's, it's good to get some insight, just uh, some, some tips from the pros as well as a training plan. And so his training plan I think will suit me really well. It's pretty low mileage. It's between 50 and I'd say 75 miles a week. And I found for me in the past couple summers when, when I hit 70 and above, I just feel more fatigued and it makes it more difficult to do my workouts, which I think I really benefit from. And this summer I'm gonna focus more on the quality, low mileage, but also incorporate more cardio. And I did really well running when I was training for a triathlon. So that's biking and swimming, but you know, it can be hiking or any other form of exercise. So my plan is to, to loosely follow that plan, which is it's 18 weeks and I only have 14, so I'm going to have to condense it. But the cornerstone of that plan are these back-to-back -back runs. Every week there's a, pretty, there's a long run followed by another medium to long run that's supposed to really replicate the wear and tear that a 100 miler is gonna put on your body. Going over my week that I had for week one, it was pretty good. I got 50 miles in, almost 5,000 vertical. I do a lot of my runs here in Madison, New Hampshire, a lot of rolling dirt roads, which is really enjoyable, no traffic, and pretty, um, pretty good condition most of the time. My runs were six miles, six miles, another eight miles broken up into two runs. I'll be doing some of those two uh, a.m. p.m. runs. And Thursday, I ran to run conditioning course. So I'm doing run conditioning in town at Mountain Center Physical Therapy two times a week. That's a lot of circuits, core strengthening, glutes, all the, all the work that you put off, a lot of stretching and some yoga. So again, that's Tuesday and Thursdays, and that's nine miles from here. So that's really nice because I can run to the workout and that will count as my run for the day. You know, the problem here though is it's still ski season and I'm out skiing 
quite a bit, th- three to four times a week. Those um, trips to the mountains can last eight hours or so, and they can be upwards of 8,000 vertical feet. So your legs are pretty trashed. And you know, the big run this week was a 17 mile run, mostly on pavement, but I wanted to get it done quickly. You know, that went really well. I was, pr- I was pretty happy with that run. I wanted to bail at around 15 miles, but kept going. And Sunday, I went out on a big ski tour, and I was supposed to do a six to nine mile run. But honestly, I'd already done fifteen mi- I'd already done fifty miles, which for running, coming from ski season right into running season, is actually quite a bit of mileage. So it's okay to skimp on the mileage. I'm looking at the big picture. I know it's going to take a few weeks for my body to adjust, but I'm pretty happy. I mean, these numbers are great, and I'm motivated, and I'm excited to see how this works out. You know, this is this is new territory for me, putting in these back-to-back big runs and then also the consistency. So it's starting my run season much earlier, whereas in years past, I would start in May. So this is cool. I'm excited to share this whole um, experience with an audience. And I think I'm going to be doing these every week or every other week. Editing takes a while, and I want to make it a little more interesting and and pull up some video and hopefully take some videos from from, uh, every, you know, something of interest each week. So for this week, I'll link to this UTMB video that I shot last summer. And, you know, it's one of those events that until you go there, it's hard to understand how big it is. And watching other racers finish it and other people have success there. It makes me really want to participate in it. So um, that's the big carrot. So until next week, happy running.